welcome to a very special bank holiday edition of the Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Yes, it's a very sunny bank holiday Monday, and what am I doing? I'm sat indoors filming this, and uh, well, why not? I mean, yes, I could be lounging in the garden doing absolutely nothing, but these days I kind of find it really difficult just to sort of do nothing. There always seems to be something that needs to be uh, attended to, shall we say, and uh, I have boxes upon boxes of. Uh, <laughs> half tasted samples that uh, I need to do something with and um, well what better to do than uh, share them with you guys and uh, um, what a lineup I have for you today it has to be said these are uh, all last month's releases in the Douglas Lang extra old particular range the old and expensive stuff that they bottle and um, I'd just like to say a really, really big thank you to uh, Douglas Lang for sending the samples. I mean, I know they send samples every month, and they send samples of, generally speaking, most of the prominence and the old particular bottlings, but not that often do they send the samples of the uh, the really old stuff, it has to be said. And uh, uh, But last month they indeed, they sent them, and uh, just really, really big thank you. Um, and uh, well, that's not really a great deal much else to say, is there? I mean, you know, I've done episodes of the show on Douglas Lang before, and uh, um, I'm just going to cut to the chase and, uh, and introduce uh, today's lineup. Right, okay, so um, it's not very often I get the opportunity to say I'm kicking off today's episode of the show with the youngest whiskey, and that's 21. And indeed, that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm starting with a 21 year old Glen Rothes, and um, this was uh, distilled in September of 1996, bottled in March of this year at 55.5%. <clears throat> cask reference DL12377 for those of you that like to know these kind of things and with a retail figure of around about £205 I'm hoping it's going to be good uh, aged in uh, refill hogs, uh, bourbon hogshead I believe um, so hopefully no, well certainly no stinky sherry there has to be said which seems to uh, permeate the current distillery releases it has to be said um, anyway, the second bottle we'll be looking at is a Glen Turret. Oh yes, Glen Turret. Now, I haven't said uh, too many nice things about Glen Turret in the last couple of episodes of the show. This is a 30-year-old, distilled in uh, December of 1987, bottled in February of this year at 45.3%. Uh, again, from a refill bourbon hogshead, and uh, the cask reference is DL12378 retail price of around about £245 so we shall see if back in the day Glen Turret was producing some good spirit and putting it into good wood and for 245 quid you should bloody hope so anyway third bottling we'll be looking at is a Springbank a 21 year old Springbank to be precise and uh, this was uh, distilled in uh, October of 1996 bottled March of this year at 50.8%. DL reference number 12376 and a price tag of 340 quid. Um, aged in uh, a refill uh, bourbon sog hogshead. So hopefully that should be really interesting. I always like to uh, uh, see old Springbank uh, just purely aged in American oak because obviously the distillery tends to use a reasonable amount of sherry. So it's Always nice to sort of see old Springbank from a slightly different perspective, shall we say. Uh, fourth bottle we're looking at is a 30-year-old Bamore. Uh, now this has been aged in uh, a refilled sherry butt. Uh, it was distilled in uh, November of 1987, bottled in March of this year, 30 years old, uh, at 50.8%. Cask reference DL12376. And I believe you can find this online for the princely sum of about £326. So, Melbourne Moors can be a bit hit and miss, it has to be said. Although, more often than not, they do tend to be very, very impressive. So, we shall see what this one falls into, category-wise. Um, and the next bottling we'll be looking at is the first of the two grains. Uh, this is a 44-year-old Garn Heath. Um, Garn Heath, obviously, for those of you who don't know, is a, a long-gone grain distillery now. And uh, don't often see very much of it 
about. It has to be said, it pops up now and again and normally has uh, a reasonable price tag attached to it, although this is actually pretty reasonable because I've seen it online for about £286, which is actually, for a 44-year-old whiskey, is an absolute steal. Um, so this was distilled in February of 1974, bottled in March of this year. Uh, it has been aged in a refill bourbon barrel and uh, the cask reference is DL12376, bottled at 45.8%. And finally, this one. It's not very often these days I get the opportunity to taste a whiskey that's actually older than me. I mean, I suppose when I was about 21, 30, you know, that's not particularly too difficult. But now I've reached the uh, this ripe old age, it's um, hard to come by, it has to be said. But this is indeed 55 years old and was distilled in August of 1962, almost uh, five years to the month before I was even born. Wow, um, it's always a frisson of excitement when uh, when uh, you, you taste these kind of old whiskies. And uh, so this was uh, bottled in March of this year at 45.4%. Uh, it has been aged in a refill bourbon hogshead and the DL reference is 12398. And yet you guessed it, it ain't cheap. You know, you'll be looking at just over a thousand pounds for for this particular bottling. So I kind of worked it out that three CL of this would probably be about forty three quid. So Dr. Slang is exceedingly generous. Yes, all right, I keep saying that, but yes, they've been incredibly generous and um, <laughs> they carry on sending me these samples. So, so that's today's uh, bank holiday lineup. I think it's going to be a pretty impressive tasting. So. Um, We'll kick off with the young one. Okay, so American Oak Age going rough. Let's see what uh, what this gives us. Oh, that's a lovely nose. Mature, dusty oak, slightly tropical fruit. Oodles and oodles of honey and barley. It's got a lovely citrus vibrancy to it and... Um, there's, there's no stinky sulphur and uh, there's certainly no rough edges. There's a, a little bit of hyacinth, um, honeysuckle, slight, almost kind of violety as well. Oh, and that oak is just sublimely buttery and all really well balanced. Um, God, that is a gorgeous nose and... Uh, I can't think of too many times I've said that. No, 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 I will be fair. I have tasted a, a reasonable amount of old Glen Rothers and there was a lot of it that appeared probably about 10 or 12 years ago, maybe even longer than that in actual fact. I remember certainly Douglas, uh, not Douglas, uh, Duncan Taylor uh, used to bottle some exceedingly good bottlings um, back in the day, but oh, wow, that is it's stunning. And, you know, 205 quid. I mean, yeah, it's expensive. I'll give you that. But, oh, wow, that is deep, complex, and just so, so clean. Oh, let's see what the power's like. Moist, juicy, honeyed, wonderful barley, lovely vibrancy, um, citric, uh, a little bit of lemon, white fruit, um, again a little bit of a floral note, more honey, um, oak grips a little bit on the middle, a little bit of bitterness but that kind of just adds a counterbalance to the sweetness of the honey in my opinion. Um, so juicy. I mean, it is just like mm, kind of mouth-watering and, and succulent and unctuous and oh, and that oak is just so so well balanced. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of butter. Um, wow, just oh, if all Glenrothes was as good as this, then you know. Um, uh, but unfortunately. It isn't, uh, but this, this is absolutely stunning. Okay, deep breath time. Time for a bit of uh, old Glen Turret. Let's uh, see what uh, 
what this is like then, shall we? That is absolutely gorgeous. Classically Highland, although slightly more in that mature tropical kind of character. A um, little bit of lime, a little bit of citrus, uh, lemon, more honey. It's It's got a, a lovely kind of Highland minerally edge to it. Um, That is absolutely stunning, it has to be said. A um, little bit more oak. The oak is a little bit more forward, um, but it's got that slightly sawdusty kind of character, but it's, it's the, the sort of interplay between the barley and the honey that is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, and like I said, that it's, it is quite voluptuous, but you've got that sort of citrus, you've got that minerally um, highland kind of note coming through. A little bit of warm vanilla. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That is a stunning whiskey, and it certainly doesn't feel too old. It is well, I wouldn't quite go as far as saying it seems like a baby, but uh, um, I mean, I wouldn't have quite said this was thirty years old. But it, you know, mid twenties, I would have said if I was tasting this blind. But oh, it's just absolutely stunning. Let's see what the palate's like. Mmm, kind of bookends with the oak, it kind of opens with a little bit of um, slightly toffied oak and kind of finishes with, with the oak, but in between you get that wonderful honey character, you get the granity, minerally, citric sort of highland character, all just kind of working nicely together, a little bit of spice, um, very softly spiced, a little bit of sweet spice, a little bit of almost cinnamony kind of notes. Um, and the fruit is just sort of like, you know, just underneath that kind of tropical. It's not an exuberant tropical note, but it has that sort of slightly tropical maturity to it, which is just absolutely stunning. Um, really, really long. And like I said, the whole thing is kind of bookended by the oak, opening with the oak and finishing with the oak and just, oh. Right, okay, so let's move on. Okay, so let's move on to the spring bank. Let's see what the uh, nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that is stunning. Where do we start with this one? Cinder toffee, um, dusty peat, gritty tannins, fish oils, apricot. Lime, barley, little bit of honey, little bit of, of, of oak, um, but not very much at all. It's all about that wonderful Campbelltown character. There's a little bit of salt, not a huge amount. I mean, so I'm guessing that this cask has probably spent a fair few years on the mainland, it has to be said, but it's certainly done it no harm at all. And although the it's not sherry, the tannins do have that kind of classic gritty spring bank kind of uh, demeanour, shall we say, and um, oh, it's just wonderfully fishy, lovely, elegant peat, a um, little bit of treacle toffee, oh, 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 that is absolutely stunning, like I said, it's always nice to see spring bank, uh, certainly old spring bank, just aged in American oak, um, and this is absolutely stunning. A little bit of violets coming out now. Mm. Let's see what the power's like. Oh, that's a wonderful dusty peat finish. 
just not not quite an echo but a little bit more than an echo should we say um, lovely subtlety to the peat on that finish um, but again it opens up with some slightly gritty tannins some lovely voluptuous um, apricot fish oils a little bit of tar a um, little bit of probably a bit more than a little bit of salt in actual fact certainly the finish has got a lovely kind of saltiness to it um, you know, some dusty American oak uh, again like on the nose the oak is, is, is very much sitting in the background it's very subtle um, it's adding that kind of gritty sort of structure to the to the whiskey and um, like I said amazing length absolutely wonderful with the peak kind of coming through and oh, oh that's a damn good spring man. Right, let's move on to the only uh, sherry whiskey uh, of the afternoon. This is the 30 year old Bamore. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, classic old Bamore. Windswept, earthy, quite sort of cindery in, in that sort of peat wood kind of burnt character. Um, the, the sherry is, is subtle, it's just adding a little bit of treacle, a little bit of tar, toffee, a bit of cocoa, a touch of violets. There's a, even a little bit of, of, of green fruit, sort of almost kind of green gauge. Um, a little bit of almost kiwi as well, possibly. Oh, but that's, that's dense, um, but not overly sherried. Um, so that the, the, the character of the, of the spirit is coming out and it's it's kind of masculine old Bamore. it's none of this kind of modern Bamore, which is all a bit sort of friendly shall we say this is i imagine when this was first distilled this was this was pretty damn intense it has to be said um because it's still got that lovely sort of intensity of character um I mean, what was this retailing for? Mm, 326 pounds. Well, yeah, yeah, I can live with that. I mean, this is just complexity, just off the scale. I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievably good. Oh, how many times am I going to say that through this this tasting? As we said, but it's just one of those sort of whiskies that yeah, you can just keep on sniffing. You get a little bit of something else each time you sort of approach it. I got a little bit of cinnamon uh, just a second ago. You know, sort of almost kind of dark treacle, tarry, cinnamony sort of um, creosote-ish kind of note. Um, wow, stunning. Let's see what the pal's like. Mmm, mmm, a ah, wonderful finish, sort of dusty peat, burnt embers, uh, wood spice, treacle, tar, touch of violet, but not as much as you would expect from an Albemore, they, sometimes they don't come across overly violet, and certainly this one doesn't, it has to be said, um, really lovely dark chocolate aftertaste, sort of cocoa powder, and, um, 90% dark chocolate, um, salt, again not a huge amount so I'm guessing it's probably spent a fair few years on the mainland but again it's kind of like that robust sort of old-fashioned but more that sort of manly kind of macho-y sort of uh, style that um, I remember falling in love with many many years ago it has to be said and um, still got a bit of a kick in the tail it has to be said you know a little bit of bitterness um, but oh, that just makes it all just sort of come together in my opinion. That is an absolutely stunning album all. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Garn Heath. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Whoa, that is one hell of a nose. Um, where do you start with that? It's got a really kind of nettly kind of herbal character. Um, there's cocoa, um, coconut, burnt wood, 
dried fruit, almost slightly armagnacky like, pruney, a little bit of walnut. Oh, wow. <sighs> Mind blowing. I mean, I've not, I must admit, I've never tasted a bad bottling of garnet. Mind you, all the garnets that do tend to come out tend to be pretty old. I mean, I forget exactly when it was, uh, when it was closed, but wow, sort of burnt wood city on this one, it has to be said. It's incredible. Loads and loads of wood spices, hickory, um, licorice, nutmeg, even a almost kind of paprika -y kind of note, you know, sort of, and, and, and some lovely American oak. It's got an almost kind of bourbon -y sort of fullness to it. Um, wow. Oh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, you know, you know I love my old grain whiskies and, you know, they can show with age a serious level of complexity once the kind of the oak has kind of mellowed out and um, added, uh, you know, wood spices and all that kind of stuff. And wow, this, I mean, you know, £286 for this. I mean, if you can still get hold of a bottle, um, oh, bargain, absolute bargain. And uh, the complexity is just stunning. Oh, oh palette. Wow, dark chocolate, coconut, it's like a liquid bounty bar. I mean, it is just stunning. A um, little bit of burnt wood spice, a little bit of earth, tar, treacle, dried fruits, chocolate coming back again, as is the coconut. Um, oh, stunning length. It's quite a lovely sort of mouth coating, oily consistency. Um, mingled in with that dark chocolate and the coconut and oh mother that's bloody good um a little bit of wood smoke on the finish uh really really long and like i said i mean you know two 286 pound and that is just an absolute bargain i mean that's just oh, off the scale Finally, we're on to the old one. <laughs> this is the 55-year-old uh, North British. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Stunningly deep, moist, raisinated fruit, fruit cake, prune, ar almonds, walnut, a little bit of coconut, but not as much as the as the garn heath. Touch of wood spice, more kind of um, of the sort of lighter column still dried fruits. I mean, wow, this is fifty five, and this is. I hope I look. I hope I'm this good at fifty five. Has to be said. Um, this is stunning, absolutely sensational. I mean, really complex. Um, again. With old with grain whiskies, it's all about the interaction with. Uh, I mean, all whiskey at the end of the day is about the interaction between the, the spirit and the wood. But because the grain whiskey is a lot lighter and certainly in its youth uh, less characterful, should we say, it really needs the wood to add major levels of complexity. And this does in absolute spades. I mean, it's got that lovely sort of mature fruit, that sort of slightly oxidised fruit um, and then you've got the coconut, the vanilla, the spices oh, a little bit of treacle as well there's almost kind of a slightly herbal note coming out now, sort of kind of almost kind of green peas, you know, fresh you know, peas in the pod kind of thing a um, little bit of vegetalness but it's just you know, all kind of wrapped up together and just, it's just so, so complex. Let's see what the power's like. Oh. 
Oh, it's so smooth. Oh, it's like a, an angel dancing on your tongue. Um, really smooth, soft, licorice, um, dark honey, a little bit of coconut, wood spice, burnt wood, dried fruit. Really mellow, really sort of, just kind of gently unwinds. There's a little bit of sort of barbecue sauce, soy sauce kind of note kind of coming through on the middle. And then we're back to the dried fruit again um, and the wood spice. Oh, that is, it's a little dry on right on the very, very end, um, but I can forgive it that. I mean, it's still got that lovely sort of mouth tingling uh, level of... Uh, um, alcohol and um, which kind of freshens it all up and just stops it being sort of you know too sort of soft and flabby um, but oh I mean the burnt wood finish it has to be said is, is incredible so toasty oak as well but you know more kind of like burnt toast oak rather than sort of like fresh toast and oh oh what a way to finish Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Well, like I said again, a big, big thank you to uh, Douglas Lang for the samples for today's episode of the show. I mean, what a stunning array of whiskies. I mean, absolutely sublime. Even the Glen Rothes. I mean, the Glen Rothes 21 was just how Glen Rothes should be. You know, wonderful, wonderful whiskey. Um, and, you know, when you taste an, uh, an old whiskey from... A distillery that, shall we say, is is not top of your uh, league table, shall we say. You know, you just sort of think, well, you know, back in the day you were doing something right. And a lot of the time it really does come down to sulphur sherry casks. And although I don't think they're as endemic in the industry as they probably once were, certainly not since um, a lot of the, uh, the old 80s bottlings have, uh, have gone, um, but there's still a lot of them about and uh, dirty, slightly, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe it is some of these distilleries are just pushing their stills a bit too hard. You know, they, they, they need to produce a spirit. They're not sort of, you know, going, right, OK, we're going to do a nice, relaxed, gentle distillation. Fermentations are shortened, um, all this kind of stuff, you know, and uh, sometimes I, I feel it is to the detriment of the whiskey. Sometimes you just cannot rush these things. And, um, oh, and not ranting because I'm just going to effuse about these whiskies. This was absolutely stunning. Um, the Glen Turret, again, absolutely gorgeous. Um, beautiful maturity, um, lovely sort of classic highland minerality and, and, and sort of citrus notes kind of balancing up all that honey and mature oak. Mm, absolutely wonderful. The Springbank, again, absolutely sublime. Really nice to see a Springbank not uh, aged in sherry or certainly an old Springbank and just gives you a, a feeling of, of how good the spirit is that comes off those stills in Campbelltown. Uh, the Bamor, again, just an absolutely stunning whiskey. Um, my kind of whiskey, the sort of like the Bamore I remember from, you know, 12, 15 years ago when I, you know, was just a neophyte, should we say, within the within the whiskey industry. And uh, uh, I remember tasting Bamore, and it certainly was a case of, whoa, what is this whiskey? And you know, like I said, I think uh, certainly the distillery bottlings have become a little bit. Um, mm, you know, anyway. Um, and the, uh, the the Garnheath, uh, like I said, I don't think I've ever tasted a, a bad bottling of Garnheath, but then they all, like I said, they all tend to have some wonderful age. And I love bounty bars. I mean, it's like, oh my God, liquid bounty bar, but so much more. It's not that just simple. It's not just, you know, um, coconut and, and dark chocolate. I mean, it's just array of wood spices and, and, and things like that. And, and just at the end of the day, an absolutely stunning whiskey. And um, the North British, well, yeah, okay, expensive, yes, old whiskey is going to be expensive, and I think a lot of people, certainly a lot of customers come in the shop saying, oh, I want to buy a 30-year-old whiskey, and you say, well, that's going to be at least sort of like 400-odd pounds, or 450 pounds, and they're going, oh, how much? Uh, and people just don't understand the fact that, yes, old whiskies are expensive, and, um, but that 
you know, when they are that quality um, and have that level of complexity. And uh, I mean, just imagine, can you imagine how, what is a 55 year old bottle of Macallan going to set you back? Um, I mean, not that I've tasted a 55 year old Macallan, but I've tasted very old sherried whiskies. You know, certainly whiskies have been uh, aged in first fill, uh, Oloroso and oh, hello. Wondered when you were going to put an appearance. Um, and it's, they're just old sherried whiskies. Yes, they are very, very impressive, but they are just old and they're very sherried. And, you know, 55 year old Macallan is going to flop up. I, mean, I don't know what it's going to cost you, but it's going to cost you a damn sight more than a thousand pounds for that. And that is just absolutely stunning. It is, isn't it, Puddy Cat? Yes, absolutely stunning. So, anyway, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag, the very special bank holiday edition. God, I feel like a Bond villain here stroking the cat. But anyway, so until uh, next time, good afternoon and good running.